Hello everyone and welcome to another anatomy video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy channel and today we will talk about the innervation of the thoracic limb in the dog. So let's get started. So in this video we will talk about uh, the innervation of the forelimb in the dog. So to be able to see all the nerves, you know, uh, responsible for the innervation of all the muscles of the forelimb, in this case it's better to go to the med media service. So the on the media service here actually we have the uh, brachial plexus or part of the brachial plexus which is formed by the fusion of the last uh, cervical spinal nerves and the first two thoracic spinal nerves uh, to form the brachial plexus. From the brachial plexus uh, another 12 nerves will uh, move uh, to the uh, wall of the thorax uh, to the uh, pectoral muscles to another muscles on the t of the trunk in this region but of course uh, most of them will move uh, for the innervation of the muscles of the forelimb and let's look at some of them here which we dissected and let's start in this case with this one here there is one of these nerves which moves actually as you can see here cranial to the scapula exactly between the subscapular muscle and the, the supraspinatus muscle which we can see part of it in the medial view here so this nerve and from the location it moves cranial supra to the scapula and that's why we will name it as a suprascapular nerve the suprascapular nerve is um, there for the innervation of the supraspinatus uh, and infraspinatus muscle on the lateral surface of the scapula. So this is the suprascapular nerve. So let's put it on the side. Here from the brachial plexus you will find also some nerves going directly as you can see here to this muscle here. So the muscle is the subscapular muscle and uh, good news for all of uh, us you know that uh, the nerve has the same name. So the subscapular nerve, or in books you will find that they will name, name them as subscapular nerves because you may find more than two or three nerves for the innervation of the subscapular uh, muscle. Some of these branches, they may also innervate uh, part of the supraspinatus muscle, so subscapular nerves let's move them also to the side like this and now in this area we can see this nerve here this nerve moves exactly caudal to the uh, shoulder joint caudal to the shoulder joint in this region here between the teres major muscle and the subscapular muscle Musculus subscapularis or teres major muscle. In this uh, area, it gives a lot of uh, small branches uh, for the innervation of these two muscles. So that means the caudal part of the subscapular muscle is also innervated by the axillary nerve. Oh, we didn't mention the name of it. So this is the axillary nerve. So the axillary ner nerve gives branches to the caudal part of the subscapular muscle, branches to the teres uh, major muscle. On the way there, it gives also branches to the teres minor muscle and finally, finally gives uh, a lot of branches to the deltoid muscle, the axillary nerve. So let's put it also to the side like this. Here, this nerve is also one of the branches of the brachial plexus. If you follow this nerve, you can see how this nerve innervates the latissimus dorsi, the latissimus dorsi, and that's why this nerve is the thoracodorsal nerve. The thoracodorsal nerve runs toward the latissimus dorsi next uh, or along with the thoracodorsal artery, 
and there was also another structure in this area called the thoracodorsal vein, which we remove it. So the thoracodorsal nerve for the innervation for the innervation of the latissimus dorsi. So let's move it to the side here. Now, in this uh, area, we can see this nerve here. If you look at the nerve here, you can find that this nerve gives branches for the. So this is. Let, let me just tell you the name. This is the musculocutaneous nerve. The musculocutaneous nerve gives branches to the coracobrachial muscle, and as you can see here, also to the biceps brachii moves down and gives another branch to the biceps brachii uh, uh, distally here. So this is the musculocutaneous nerve musculocutaneous nerve for the innervation of the coracobrachial uh, of the uh, biceps and even there for the uh, brachialis muscle musculocutaneous nerve allow me please to uh, please to, to put it on the side here so here we can see also one three nerves no? finally we have three nerves one two and three one of them is the radial nerve, one of them is the ulna nerve, and the last one is the median nerve. How can we differentiate between them? So let me tell you that the radial nerves, is that nerve which starts from the medial side here and moves directly here to the lateral side of the forelimb, and this is the radial nerve. The radial nerve is responsible for the innervation of all extensors of the forelimb with the exception of the extensors of the shoulder joint. That means here in this area, as you can see, it gives branch here for the innervation of the long head of the triceps brachii, this one here. It gives also branches to the medial head of the bicep, uh, triceps brachii and on the other side it gives also some branches to the accessory and to the lateral head of the triceps brachii and after that as we described previously in one of the videos it gives on the lateral side uh, two um, branches the superficial radial uh, branch and the deep uh, radial branch so this is the radial nerve let's put it on the side uh, finally we have two nerves this is the median nerve and that one is the ulna nerve. So if we start with the ulna nerve, the ulna nerve moves uh, caudally. So this is the caudal side of this uh, and this is the cranial side. So it moves caudally at this level between the medial uh, condyle of the humerus and the olecranon and uh, moves between the two heads of the flexor carbi ulnars there and uh, gives the branches for the innervation of the flexors of the digits and uh, and uh, uh, carbos, uh, carbos. Uh, here the median nerve is that nerve which moves down exactly in the middle of the forelimb here and uh, at this level gives a lot of branches for the innervation of the flexor muscles of the carbos and flexor muscles of the digits. Okay, as we are here, let me just go through the muscles which we can see here, remind you about the name of them. So the first uh, muscle which we can see actually here is the wrist of the ventral serratus uh, muscle which inserts to the serrated face of the scapula. Here we have the subscapular, subscapular muscle or muscular subscapulars. Um, just in front of it here we can see part of the supraspinatus muscle, which uh, you know we can see actually or located on the lateral uh, side. Here caudally we have uh, part or the rest of the latissimus dorsi. Here, between the caudal angle of the scapula to the teres major tuberosity, we have the teres major muscle. So this is the teres major muscle. Uh, in this region, we have this small muscle called the coracobrachial muscle. We have the biceps brachii, which is located the cranium medially on the humerus, as you can see. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, in the caudal uh, uh, area here we have. Uh, 
the triceps brachii, including the long head of the triceps brachii, including the medial head of the triceps brachii, and between them here we can also see part of the accessory head of the triceps brachii. Um, the lateral head is of course on the other side. And uh, here we can see the axillary artery. The axillary artery gives some um, uh, branches. Um, the subscapular artery here we have also of course cranial the suprascapular artery we have here the thoracodorsal artery to the latissimus dorsi at this level gives also some uh, branches to the muscles the deep brachial artery uh, another small branches everywhere here for the muscles as you can see here for the triceps for the biceps and so on and after that of course the axillary axillary artery after giving this uh, um, uh, artery uh, called here the brachial artery which moves down and at the end uh, from here and down called the median artery